Today, we're gonna to learn how to install a custom clear acrylic door onto your display case. Let's jump on in. As I mentioned before in my last video, I have a young kid and man, are they attracted and prone to touching your collectibles. Gosh, you could put their toys, lay them out all across the room, guess where they're going? Your display case. That's what sparked the motivation for me to go ahead and figure out how to put a door on my display case. When I was looking around the internet, perusing, Googling, uh, looking at videos, uh, everything was just aesthetically unappealing. It, it took away from some of the display cases, whether it was uh, the borders around it were too thick or maybe they had a little slats inside with wood that was kind of holding glass into place. I didn't like it. So I came up with the idea, let's install a literal sheet of acrylic and bam, here we are today. We're gonna learn all about how to install that. Before we jump into what resources are needed, let's talk about part three. There are two topics that I wanna cover that I've been asked about, and one is installing a lock mechanism. So that could be in the form of magnets that keep some extra security on keeping the door shut, or it might even be a physical lock mechanism that can be installed so you can't open it up unless you have a key. Uh, the second and most important to me that I can't wait to look into and find a solution uh, for everybody is how to reinforce shelves. Now, there are tons of different ways that we can go about doing this. Uh, my goal is always trying to figure out the slickest way possible. And I found this black steel rod in a U-shaped form that I'm gonna be using and trying to see if I can reinforce the shelves. And once I break down that process and I can share with everybody, I absolutely will. Uh, but over time, one of the scariest things in collecting is like the sagging and bowing of a particle wood shelf or just wood in general. And so how can we kind of take it a step further, prevent that from happening? Because statues are getting more and more heavy every single time I see a release, it's ridiculous. But let's go ahead and adapt to the times and see what we can do in part three. And lastly, before the resource breakdown, let's talk about you. Have you subscribed to the channel? Are you enjoying my content? Uh, focusing on display case enhancements, statue unboxings, Pokemon cards. I love unboxing statues for the series that I collect. Uh, Naruto, Pokemon, Full Metal Alchemist. I even got some uh, Overwatch statues coming. I enjoy bringing that content to everybody. Are you enjoying it? If so, hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment, especially for this video. Let me know what you guys think of this series. Are you enjoying it? Is it helpful? What's been helpful for you? Uh, reach out to me on my social media if you have any questions. If you wanna show me the display case that you built, I would love to see that. Let's talk about what supplies you'll need before we bring this to life. First and foremost is a large sheet of acrylic. Now that is gonna be a little bit complex as far as where to get it from. Uh, might be easy, might be difficult. I cannot recommend somewhere online to do that. I have a local plastics company that lives about 45 minutes from where I live that I got my sheets cut at. Uh, if you find a plastics company, getting a large sheet of acrylic is like asking Lowe's or Home Depot for lumber. It's raw materials for them, it's basic resources. All you need to provide them is with measurements. Now I'm gonna go ahead and re-remind everybody what size PAX case that I own as well as what measurements I got my acrylic cut with. Now, as far as the thickness, it's going to be a quarter inch is what I did my first doors with, and 3 16 is what I'm gonna be doing in this video. Now, those are gonna maybe cause uh, an increase in price the thicker that you get. My whole goal in getting the quarter inch at first was to make sure that I didn't have any bowing at all in the door. Uh, I also got three hinges on there. The more hinges you have, the more support the door has, the less likely it is to bow. Uh, but I went with the quarter inch. This time we're gonna be trying the 3 16 to see how it holds up uh, long term. Second, you're gonna need some strong, strong hinges to be able to hold this door. Uh, believe it or not, something like that, a large sheet is actually very heavy. Um, I think you could maybe get away with two hinges if you wanted to. I go with three because again, I don't want any bowing to happen. Um, and these hinges are very high quality and they lock and latch into place, which adds an extra uh, layer of security for your door and making sure that it's closed. Third is going to be a Dremel tool that comes with uh, some saw blades. I would also recommend that you buy some additional blades for yourself, but this tool is gonna to be crucial in accomplishing what we need to cut a groove into the acrylic door. Fourth is a plastic drill bit. Now by that I mean it's, the drill bit itself is not plastic, it's metal, but it's made specifically for cutting into plastic or acrylic. If you use a woodworking or a steel uh, bit to go ahead and try to drill a hole into this acrylic, you're gonna mess up your door. Be sure to get what I recommended here, and the size that I use is 3 16 as well as far as the hole. Now also you'll be needing, uh, fifth is gonna be a wooden drill bit 
three sixteenths as well to drill into your packs unit. That's particle wood, so wood drill bit, three sixteenths would be work perfectly for you. Throughout the process of this build, I'm gonna be offering you multiple different angles to be able to see how I did each step. That's to hopefully dispel any confusion you may have or questions that may come up. If there are any questions, please feel free to hit me up. Uh, but let's go ahead and stop the chatter and jump on in and take a look at this. During this build, I'm gonna be using two pieces of 3 16 thick acrylic sheets stacked on top of each other very, very tightly I'm going to go ahead and unpackage one of these hinges so that you can see up close and personal all that's included inside of it. Now these bad boys cost me about $25 a piece. Thankfully I got them on sale around the time when I ordered all six of them for both doors at around 22 bucks. This is the side that gets mounted to the particle wood on the PAX case, and this is the side that we're gonna to connect to the acrylic sheet. This faceplate is nice because it kinda of hides the clunkiness of a hinge itself and also gives it a nice clean slick look. These two pieces serve as a buffer so that whatever's mounted to the metal hinge isn't rubbing against metal directly, but more so these little plastic pieces. As you'll notice here, it takes a little bit of strength to pop these open, and it's one of my favorite parts about this hinge. It's very strong and durable. Also, the turn radius on this is exactly what you're looking for. See how far that door can go back once mounted to it? In case you're not familiar with what a Dremel tool is as well, here's a close-up shot of what they look like. You can add several different attachments to the head of this, but I use the heavy-duty cutting wheels so that we can go right through the acrylic. This plastic drill bit is by far one of the most important pieces in this whole process. I picked mine up at the acrylic store where I got the sheets cut, but thankfully you can find this online very, very easily. Be sure to check out the description in the video so that you can see all the direct links to these tools. Safety goggles are gonna be an absolute must because when you're using the Dremel tool to cut out the little hinge sockets, that plastic is gonna be flying everywhere. I wanted to provide a close-up shot of the measurements for the area where you're gonna be drilling holes for the screws and that little socket part that you'll need for the hinge. At first, don't worry about these two dots that you use to signify where I'm gonna be drilling holes. As you can see in this picture, I put one hinge on top and the bottom and one not exactly directly in the center, but more in the lower half. I didn't want it to impede with any of my center shelves, depending upon where I move those up or down ever. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where to put these markings on your door. You need to take a look at where you want your shelves to go and be sure that the hinges aren't gonna impede or get in the way of that space. Can't really go wrong as long as you put one low and high and then another one towards the center or center high, center low. This half circle little groove here is the very reason why we'll be cutting out this section within the door. Whipping this Dremel tool out, we'll go ahead and carve out this specific section. What's nice is the width of the cutting blade is about the same size as the width that you need to cut through this and make the groove.
Now you do not need to make this specific groove perfect looking. That groove you can see there is pretty rough looking, but as long as it has enough space uh, for that to settle in there, then you're good to go. What we're ultimately doing is looking to align this perfectly as you can see here. I'm going to go ahead and bust out all these screws that come with the hinge. All we're looking to use here is just four screws, but I want to make sure that you understand which ones exactly we're looking for. You can immediately discount the ones on the left here with the threads that are more spaced out. There are three different sizes for these right-sided close thread screws. Go ahead and find the pair for each and get rid of the smallest one out of these six screws and keep the large and medium for what we'll be using to mount it to the door. Now's the perfect time to put the hinge on there and mark up the specific places where you're going to be drilling a hole. The hole where the screws go in also has a little bit of wiggle room, so if you don't get the measurements done exactly, you'll be all right. It'll still fit into place. With our plastic 3 16th drill bit, let's go ahead and get a hole in there. Please forgive my derpy moment. I forgot the drill was still in reverse. After both holes are in and you've cleaned your space, let's go ahead and peel back a layer of the sticker that's on the acrylic that keeps it safe from scratches initially. If you install the hinge without doing this, it's nearly impossible to remove it all once everything's attached. Grab your hinge and the two plastic buffer pieces and let's get this bad boy installed. For the hinges, we're going to be using the medium sized screws to mount this to the sheet. This part is a tad tricky where you want to screw this in, but not all the way through. Once you start feeling the metal screw poke through the bottom, you're going to want to stop. The reason I wanted you to stop is because we need to mount this faceplate on there and it needs to start screwing in there just at the same point that it's coming through. As I mentioned earlier, I know this might seem a little redundant, but I wanted to offer multiple angles where you can see this process so you understand and again, it can maybe dispel some questions you may have through it all and give you that confidence to do this. Aligning the hinge with the side of the acrylic sheet is very important. You can see here I have to loosen it up and make some adjustments as needed to make sure it's nice and flush. With all three hinges installed, let's go ahead and lay it down on the floor right next to our PAX display case and then grab our 3 16 wood bit as well as the large screws. Ah! 
I connect the top hinge to the PAX case first, and now I'm gonna take the time to align this up and get this exactly where I want it to be. The way that I do mine is I have it very flush up top so that it aligns right with that wooden piece that we use to mount our light strip to. As you're drilling your hole, be mindful not to go all the way through or else you're going to make a hole in your PAX case. Just go inside enough to be sure that you can fit that screw in. For speed and simplicity, I went and took off the 3 16 wooden drill bit head and replaced it with a Phillips. Taking a closer look at things, we can see exactly where we need this hinge to line up with the wooden PAX case. It's very important that you try to get this flat piece of the hinge as close as possible so that it's flush. If it's off a little bit, it shouldn't be an issue. If it's off a lot, you're going to have to unscrew uh, those screws you can see right there that are mounted to the acrylic sheet until it's aligned up better. Well, there you have it. You should have this door properly mounted to your case. I'm gonna fold the door up in preparation for lifting the case. Now for the most tedious part of this whole process, removing this brown protection tape that comes stock on the acrylic sheet. Well, congratulations if you made it this far. I hope this was very helpful. If you didn't get a chance to, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on part three. Here's a nice little demonstration of how far back this door can go. Any questions, be sure to comment below. And as always, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.